726 in the AM on the Wake Up Tucson show. Rolling through it this morning. We're covering a big, big, big swath of why things are working and why things are not working. We messed up on the Allie Miller thing. She's actually scheduled for the 23rd. Wow. So... Okay, That's what a different there. Monday. Yes. Okay. All so, right. All right. Uh, 790 is the number. We, we, Joe and I were talking off air. Some of our funnest stuff is on, off air. That's why we don't put a, That's People say, why don't you put a studio cam in here? One, you don't want to look at us. But two, all the fun stuff happens yes. off air. And yes. Our hand signals. We have a whole series of hand signals, mm. you know. Like we do that thing where you point at your head and you do the circle. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Like nut crazy, ball. dude. <laughs> So, so, Joe, so anyway, um, we, we got talking about, we just left you at the break, about how the U of A and the downtown extension and lots of students coming and student housing and the rail between. And that's kind of where, where the opportunity's at. So I had yeah. a developer friend of mine call me from Dallas, reads a lot of Tucson stuff, and he said, hey, is there an opportunity? Let's, you know, if you find the opportunity, let's come together. I can find the money and make this happen. And I really don't know if I'd put hard capital yet into the downtown market or anywhere in this market. Uh, you know what I mean? Would you? I'd be a little leery still. You still got to go through the brain damage of getting a bill, number one. I just shook my head. This is a radio. Number two, um, is the market there? If the, if the market is students, now you've just jammed a whole bunch of student housing. I mean, they got a ton of that coming up, right? So you might that might be a little too far down the road. Is it the entertainment district? When, is does, the when, real... when, when does college stop becoming a social experience and actually becomes a hard education mm, thing? I think that's that's happening now. There's mm. a lot of dialogue about the cost of education because it's outpacing uh, the affordability of uh, middle-class families, the student debt issue. I mean, I think there's really going to be a hard look at does the traditional four-year college make sense? Is the return on the investment strong enough to well, dump that much money in? We, we've talked about aggressive... Um, um, now, let me ask and, you this, this yes. on this college issue. Yep. If you're hiring someone and they have a bachelor's, does it matter to you if it's from U of A or from you know Northwestern Pace Online, blah, blah, blah? Most of the time it doesn't. Yeah. Would you pay for a Harvard degree for a BA? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. Th- I don't know if it matters like it used to matter. The other thing is, too, I mean, it really, it, you got to have the piece of paper it's for a, yeah. a lot of things. It's a bench. It's a benchmark. But you know something? It's that, that benchmark to me is becoming less and less and less. Yeah. I, I, I deal with all these, you know, we both, sorry. We oh, both there's people with, probably spitting up their coffee right now who have a degree from Princeton. Or all, these, all, going, these, all these business folks that we deal with in this town, <laughs> the power grand. brokers with all their amazing education. Right. I don't see the benefit of it. Even in your private sector. You know, there's no, the problem is there's no critical thinking taught. Right. There's no, you know, we love to talk about outside the box thinking. You're, you're, you're suffocated inside the box in college. But you talked about something very important, which is Michael Crow. He's the president of ASU. Yes, those dreaded Sun Devils. And he was at okay. uh, Columbia. And he brought Columbia the biosphere. Remember when Columbia yes. bought the biosphere? So yep. he had that history. Then he jumped over to the ASU to run uh, run the ASU. He's the president of ASU. And what you were talking about is, is that in, he looked at what was going on in Phoenix and the environment and the, the kind of businesses that were moving in and developing, expanding in the Phoenix market. So he saw things like Intel needs nerd, nerds that are engineers. Right. So all of a sudden he starts... Intel put a, four, a $5 billion plant in just outside of Chandler, uh, one of their most state-of-the-art in the world, uh, big, big investment, and they need 1,000 <laughs> folks to come up there. When you drive up I-10 to Phoenix the yeah. next time, when you get to Queen Creek Road or Riggs, Riggs Road, look to your right, and you will see this thing going up with cranes. It's like a Death Star, okay? Right. And this is the difference between places like Chandler, Arizona, and here. We do cranes and crap to build streetcars mm-hmm. with taxpayer dollars. You know, $160 million of your taxpayer or, dollars. Or courthouses or, or court utility houses. buildings. Or, yeah, got All it. right, so when, when these people say they're job creators, they're doing it with your taxpayer dollars. Right. The town council of Chandler, Arizona, got a $5 billion, with a B, I'll say it like Dr. Evil, $5 billion of investment sitting on Riggs Road right off of I-10. Yep. All right? Yep. So now Crow sees, hey, I need engineers. Mm-hmm. And so he up tools. What's going on? So I think, I think the point is what Crow is doing at that university is saying, what does my community need? What's the future of my community? We're taking these state dollars into the university system and subsidizing the education of our in-state students. Right. What do we do to return our investment? And, and he's tooled the university to match the market. What, what we kind of done in, in southern Arizona for a long time has been peer research, which is good and positive. And we got the Mars lander and we got the, the astronomy world and we got the, the, the you know, the, the, all kinds of great things happening. Botana Medical spun out of the U of A. But there's not the handoff into the local community of the technology and the brain power and the company. But you also hear about the graduation rates of engineers aren't that great at the U of A. 
Yeah, I've heard that a lot too. You know, so how how are you know how do you say once you you know what's what's your work for us? You know, we've banged on TOSD and how the powers that be and the Southern Arizona Leadership Council guys have done nothing to help that equation other than send John Pettigone there. But without John Pettigone needs votes and like human beings on the board, it's useless. And you talk about Pima community, we'll get to you, Uncle Dan, in a little bit, and remediation of what's going on over there. But the U of A, the crown jewel of the thing, they're not this 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 crystal clean organization that's just the, the end all be all of this place. You know, I yep. mean, that they're, they're, they're behind the times, too, a little bit. Yep. So at the same time, when I hear these, is it 60,000? Is that the, the enrollment number they want to get to? Is yeah. that the number I heard? Yeah. So we're jamming in these 400 people in a classroom, that kind of stuff, yeah. You know? Butts and seats. It pays a lot of money. That's what I'm saying. So, so when do you start becoming a place that actually graduates people who help change the planet Earth instead of just providing a four- to seven-year social thing that they go to some place so they can go to dirt bags and have a few cocktails after that. Well, there's a big chunk that they're there. And then, in fact, the new new president just started last week. Not that there's and, anything wrong with dirt bags. Ann Weaver Hart. She's the president. She, she's the 21st president of the U of A. She yeah, we're working on from, getting, getting her over here. Yeah, for she's from room. Temple uh, University over in the uh, president of uh, in Philadelphia. That means she knows Bill Cosby. And she is uh, actually big time uh, big alum. In, in, uh, in research, peer research, which, again, there's tremendous value in subsidizing research and, and, and investing in research. I get it, man. That's so important. But what's the handoff to the local community? Uh, I'm reading, the, I'm listening to this thing from I, iTunes uh, University about Stanford, and there's a whole series on Stanford entrepreneurs. And it goes into this, okay, the entrepreneur in Stanford develops the tech company. Well, there's a handoff into the private sector, into an incubator site. There's venture capitalists that put the seed money in to get this guy going. Then that once it hits to a second level, there's a whole other set of venture capitalists and a whole bunch of brain talent from Stanford in the general area to launch the next Google, the next Facebook. I mean, it's, it's, the whole market is keyed up for how do we use the university asset to make the economy in our local region work? Well, you know what it was? Or we that... take them and we kick them out because there's nowhere to work. You had Likens, who was just too old-fashioned he was old old way of doing business and not really a too forward of a thinker. Uh, Shelton got way caught up on money. That was his thing. I think his whole well it was budget cuts and it was well I'm, I'm, I know, but yeah. I'm just telling you. Here's a guy who came from North Carolina, right. right? You got research triangles and all that jazz going right. on there, and that was one of the things that was touted about the guy. But because of his the middle of his thing, and he got caught up in trouble with that UMC deal. That was that it was, was all, all money sweep. That was all about money. Yeah, it was all about money, pot of money that the foundation had. So all this, there. these things we're talking about yeah. were were really below his radar because he was so worried about the dough. Right. So so, and you talked about how they got they, the U of A got hit with a bigger cut of their funds than NAU or ASU. So so last year NAU and ASU got bumps from the state. A U of A did not. And the question mark why? And is it because of return on investment to the local market? Does ASU kick out things? that have long-term ramifications for the state of Arizona, where U of A kind of hasn't had that experience and that background? I mean, you can, you can look at a few things. You can look at Raytheon and engineers, and I don't know if, if Raytheon is happy with the quality of engineers out of the U of A. I don't have any background on that. So there are things that the U of A helps the local economy. Sure. But for the most part, we're putting out – it's a $1.4 billion entity. At some either paid grant money, tuition from people that go there, or state subsidies into the bucket – well, what's the ROI? Where does that stay? Where does the long-term effect? Other than a lot of people on the payroll, which is good, dude. I'm not saying that's not a bad thing. But how about we take the brain power of the technologies that's created there and actually let them stay here and hire other people that live in this town? We were town. talking about um, <laughs> uh, when Trio goes on their drunk fest to San Diego. Right. right. And they go to these different communities. Right. It's like Snell doesn't have the intestinal fortitude to tell Sharon Bronson and Karen Ulick and these people who say, oh, trio. They don't have the, 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 the guts to say, you know something, the way you govern this town sucks. All right? They, he has no guts to tell them that because they can still control 35 to 40% of his funding, and you can't tell someone who controls that, hey, darling, you got an ugly baby. Right. Got to come see the baby, as we say in Seinfeld. Right? And so they go on these trips, and it's almost like this passive-aggressive way. Hey, yeah. you see the San Diego people? <laughs> right. Oh, the Huntsville people? They get it. <laughs> right. They get it. Right? <laughs> so now think about this. So now well, who do they make, put on their board of directors, and who talks? Who did the big uh, talk for Trio last year? Who was it? Michael Crow, the ASU guy. You had to bring him down, put him on your board, and he's your our annual meeting discussion. Because I think in the end, like to the U of A, they're going, hey, psst, <laughs> shh, we can't tell you. We don't have any real intestinal fortitude, but psst, hey, Crow. dummy. 
Grow. Hey, dummy, here's how you do Grow. it. <laughs> That's so true. Seven minutes. So I actually <laughs> talked to a commercial broker friend of mine, and his name will go unnamed. Gra- <laughs> this guy graduates, is an engineer, graduates from the U of A, creates a company. They had 18 or 20 employees. They do some kind of aerospace something. Or yes. He, he gets to the point where he's over his, he's too big. <laughs> so he's got to build and he's got to expand. He runs into the buzzsaw of development services on trying to go through the expansion process. Yeah. And says, I'm out of here and moves. How about the J Lab, the uh, speaker company? <laughs> They're looking for t- talented, energetic employees to take their company to the next level. Where do they go? San Diego. San Diego. Isn't that a black eye to the U of A? Yeah, man. Don't you think you get this company here locally, you know, and they're looking for science nerds to help them with their technology, and you can't find anyone at the U of A? So if you're a school at the University of Arizona and you jam a bunch of students in, gosh, there's a tremendous economic impact to that for all of us in southern Arizona. It's great for the restaurants and the bars and the apartments and all those folks downtown. That's what could be your downtown revitalization. It employs a lot of people. I think there's, in fact, U of A last year, under a hiring freeze, became our largest employer. 11,000 employees. They overpassed yep. Raytheon last yes. year. Under a hiring freeze. So they're a huge employer. They have a lot of students that come here with a lot of money to go out to eat and all that kind of stuff. So there's a tremendous, tremendous economic opportunity and in in put in here. Let's take it to the next step and say, how do we spin off some companies? How do we keep that talent pool that we've subsidized to get their education to stay in this marketplace? Yep. That's the million-dollar question. You see Mike Crow doing it up in Phoenix. You see him coming down to here talking to our trio luncheon about how they do it. Well, let's do it. I don't know. Can I get an amen? Amen, brother. Let's go pay some bills. We're going to get into the Berdeski Dan Ekstrom. We'll get to your phone call, 790-2040. Joe, this is a gig I want to get. Yes. Let's just say you have a, a good friend of yours. Yes. Right? That you see... Several times a week, and now you can actually charge the taxpayers for seeing him. Well, how about me and you? How about I go to lunch with you and I bill the taxpayers? That's what we're going to do. Awesome. So we're going to get into that. Uh, Josh Berdeski takes Dan Ekstrom to the wood shed. We have quotes from Larry Hecker in here. Ooh. Uh, the former uh, Shirley Scott and former Shirley Sharon Bronson campaign manager. Uh, what else we got here? Chuck's got a quote. And a very hilarious Suzanne Miles, the interim chancellor, hilarious. She didn't even know. This is how uh, naive this young right. lady is. God bless her. I'm not saying naive in a bad way. Right. Her comment and quote is hilarious. So get ready to drive your car off the road as we get to this next one. Wake up, Tucson, 1030 The Voice. Intelligent talk about local issues. Somebody's got to do it. Tune in to Wake Up Tucson. Mornings from 6 to 8 on AM 1030. KBOI, The Voice. She's got a body.